I'm going to talk to you today about the new honor system, how we recognize and reward teamwork in League of Legends. So who am I? Uh, I'm a UX designer at Riot Games. Been there a while, seen, seen some stuff. We used to make two champions, or one champion a patch. That was every two weeks. Um, we take things a little bit easier now and uh, polish things a little more. Um, I've worked on the in-game HUD, uh, our in-game ping communication systems, uh, our lobby matchmaking and champion select, and various player behavior systems. So that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today. A uh, little bit about Riot, this is our mission. Uh, we aspire to be the most player-focused company in the world. We hire, train, and evaluate riders on this aspect. This is like the central part of our culture. A familiar distinction for many of us is that we say player-focused very deliberately. We're not player-driven. Um, so this is pretty early for some of us on the West Coast. Uh, want to get you moving a little bit. I, I didn't see how many of you reacted before, so I, who's, who's heard of League of Legends? If I'd like show of hands. Okay. Good. So, I don't know. I, someone said seriously, and like, they're like, well, you know, what if nobody puts their hand up? I'm like, okay. Uh, and how many of you play League? Okay, so a fair amount. Um, for, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, League of Legends is a 5v5 competitive online game. So you play uh, with other people online against another team of five, and you each control one champion, and your objective is to cooperate and destroy the opposing team's base. Um, and this is like a couple of our pro North American teams uh, playing in a regular like season match, and they're, uh, I think Cloud9 is still, still in the running in... Uh, in China for our world championships. Okay, who's played with this person? All right, yeah, me too. So you know, you're like you're playing your favorite online game. Maybe you made a mistake, and then like this torrent of chat comes out at you, and someone's reaction is just completely over the top. Uh, maybe they have some pointed feedback about your grooming habits or your lineage. How does this feel to you? Is this a good time for anybody? All right. That's a tough problem, and you know, maybe we should all just get a thicker skin, right? They're just words. I, I think we all know that negative experiences feel worse for us, than, and they're more memorable. Um, and we all care about experiences here, and empathy is a big part of our craft, so I probably don't need to you know, give you a lot of reasons to care about this set of problems. But we all work at businesses and their competing priorities and the businesses need to make money so they can pay our salaries and you know, we can all keep doing what we love. So improving this doesn't make financial sense, does it? Except this causes players to leave your game. Valve and us have talked a lot about the effect that player behavior has in previous talks and we get tons of feedback about this from our players. So I'm gonna read you a little quote from Mike Schollers on why he doesn't play online. If my choice is between paying the better part of $100 to have slurs yelled at me by strangers or enjoying one of my many other entertainment options, I'll choose the latter. There are no comforting words in this situation. How do you tell somebody that this is going to continue no matter what game they play? How do you argue that they should stay in this environment? Why would they want to? We make games for people to have fun. We make games so that you, know, you can escape from the normal world. Maybe you can connect with somebody else that you would never meet in real life. Mike doesn't sound like he's having very much fun, even though he wants to. So we want players to feel like we have the most sportsmanlike community in competitive online games. What do we mean by sportsmanship? Play fair? play to win. And the competitive banter part is like, hey, we don't want to be the fun police here. Although there is a line that we enforce that's driven by feedback from the community. And why sportsmanship? Because we think it improves the quality of play. I can play better and have more fun when I'm not distracted by negativity. 
when I feel like my team wants me to succeed and that we're all playing to win. And sportsmanship supports a lasting competitive game. I think everybody in here knows that making games is hard and there's no guarantee of success. So if you already have a great game, it's so much easier to keep players playing the thing that they already love rather than trying to make something new because they've left. So what do we do? This is the obvious, conventional, and logical solution, right? You catch the bad guys and you hold them accountable. There's an action and a reaction. You break the rules, there are consequences. We've talked a lot about the work that we've done in this area and we've had a lot of success in this tough problem space. But real talk, how many of you have been this person? I have. I've, you know, had my mouse in my hand and I'm smashing it on, the, on my desk and I've yelled some things that I probably wouldn't repeat to my mother out loud. Um, I, I've let some of this leak into what I say to my teammates. Who else has done this? I mean, you know, I, I'm not going to call you out because, like, we, we, don't, like, we don't trust each other yet. Um, <laughs> but who's felt bad after? And do you think that you're like this terrible, unredeemable person that's ruining the game and ruining the world? No, of course not. I'm just having a bad day. We're not robots. We make mistakes. And most of the negative behavior we see is from isolated incidents triggered by a bad day or a bad game. So this isn't a free pass. We still need to own up to our actions. However, simply punishing players for rare outbursts doesn't change behavior. We already know this is wrong when it happens to us. And we're biased towards noticing flaws in others more easily than we notice flaws in ourselves, which leads to people ignoring feedback. Why would you punish me? I'm a good guy. It's the system that's broken. I just made a small mistake. So how about we try some carrots? What if we give players a reason to be nicer to each other and maybe we can have some more consistent behavior that is in line with the spirit of the game? So there, there's this concept in economics um, when you're dealing with the tragedy of the commons. So that's like um, air pollution or overfishing, like overuse of a shared resource. And they call it internalize the externality. Um, can we take the positive benefits of sportsmanship which are really kind of hard to feel when you're in the moment playing a game, and can you make that more visible to players through rewards? So, we decided to experiment. Talk a little bit about what we've done in the past and where we are today. This was five years ago that we released the first version of Honor. And we we're like, okay, we're going to empower players to recognize each other and encourage positive play. And we made this great system. We're like, you can honor another player. They'll see the honors. They see all the honors that they get from everybody in the game. And it's like, you get enough honors and you, you get this crest that shows up on the loading screen and everybody else sees it. So great. Problem solved, right? You know, players can recognize each other after a game and they have some long-term aspirational rewards that are visible to other players. Of course, we're not so smart. Players started for, to forget to honor each other. The honors that they got didn't feel very exciting and it started to feel a little flat and the same. It was hard to get crests, and you didn't understand how you got them, so you didn't see a lot of players with them. And what started off as high engagement tailed off over the long term. Honor wasn't meaningful to give or receive. So if you'll indulge me a little bit, what would you do? Talk to your neighbors. Um, tell me a little bit about, like, hey, like, what, other, what do you see other games do? Um, what's good about it? What are some of the risks? Like, and if you're in the front, you can shout ideas out at me, I'm sure. Some of you, hey. But yeah, like, th think a little bit about this problem. Like, 
how would you approach this, uh, given what we know here? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. That's fine, because I've got plenty to talk about for how we did it. <laughs> so we decided to update the design. And we learned some things from our first shot at it, and we took this approach. Let's use knowledge of our biases to make human solutions. So after a game, we ask you to honor a teammate in a specific category. We force you to make a choice so that you're more likely to vote. And to make this work, we make the actions fast and the screen appealing, and you get good feedback so that you're not as inclined to skip. We celebrate the honor that you get with awesome motion graphics and sound, and the more honor you get, the more we celebrate it. And we do it right away. As soon as the votes come in, we show them to you and we celebrate them. And if you get enough votes, we tell everybody else in the game that you are the most honorable player in the game. So you get a tight feedback cycle between your actions in the game and the feedback that you get from your teammates. And once you're outside the game, we give you rewards for consistent sportsmanship. On top of the recognition from your peers, we give you tangible rewards that are, you know, these are things that are actually worth money in the game. And we give you some things like rare skins that you actually can't get anywhere else. And this is as long as you are neutral or positive in your game, so everybody can participate in this. And we do it as a pleasant surprise because we don't want to supplant intrinsic motivation. We don't want you to expect these things or feel like you're filling a bar to get them because then you might start thinking that you're only honoring people to get these rewards. It might even replace your intrinsic motivation to honor somebody because you enjoyed playing with them. So we use layers of positive reinforcement and at any given time, one of these is active. And we're always trying to provide you positive reinforcement for your behavior, but we don't want to be too predictable. So you'll see like almost all of these have some kind of variance to them so that we get an intermittent ratio schedule, which is very motivating, but has slightly lower risk of side effects. And we give you social recognition when you're honored. So if you play a game, and a couple people honor you, the next game that you play, you'll get to show off your crest on the loading screen to everybody else so that they know that you actually just came off a game where other real life people enjoyed playing with you. And hopefully, you'll bring that positive energy into this game you're playing right now. So we're priming the next game to be more positive with a little nudge. And it's a signal to players that the system is working and that their contribution matters. And because of all the things that we give you, you have something to lose if you cross the line. And we know that losing something feels worse than gaining the same thing. It's a, this is a powerful force, and we're careful with how we use it. And we give you a way to reform. And we try to find moments, even for players who might not <coughs> be the best behaved, to give them encouragement and positive recognition when they're on the right road. We do this all in one holistic system. In this case, we all know what a minimum viable product is, right? But the key word for us here is viable. For us, viable meant that we needed to have all these pieces of the system together when we shipped, because the sum is greater than the parts. So that was a little league specific, and you're like, okay, how do I apply these problems to other problems, or apply these solutions to other problems I have? So let's talk about it a little bit. But it'll be easy, right? Like, we talked about all this great stuff, and you're like, I take these ideas. Um, we know better than that. This is a screenshot, uh, a little bit blurred out, of a spreadsheet that we use to track all the risks to the success of Honor. And it, it keeps going. And we took these risks and we started applying them to our design and tried to find ways to evaluate or mitigate them. Because we wanted to know how big is the risk? Do we need to pay attention to it? Um, 
Does it matter? Well, okay. We have a holistic system with many disciplines. So, no single discipline really owned any part of this. Like, we all had to work together. And actually, one thing that really helped us was we sat together, and the closest collaborators even sat next to each other. Don't underestimate the power of proximity to keep your team aligned and to allow you to have spontaneous conversations. Align on why, not just what. Don't focus on the exact thing that you're building. Empower your team to contribute. This resulted in stronger buy-in from our team. And we used experiential goals to talk about what we were trying to do. Talk about how you want your players to feel. This is better at getting the outcome than you, uh, that you want and is less solution specific. And we designed together. We had so many different disciplines working on this. Even just within design, we had game systems designers to shape the overall systems, UX, visual designers, motion graphics, and sound to add emotional high points, plus all the other people on the team. And we would get together in rooms and talk about our designs and just see what, you, what each other was thinking and give each other ideas. So, pretty, pretty standard like design cycle. We ideated a bunch of things and then we would test them and then we repeat. We did six labs over the course of development and they were actually like full 10 person labs where we had people play a game and then use a prototype of the honor system after that. So because of this, you need to be willing to change your core interactions many times so that you can simplify. We use testing as a crucible to evaluate risks. It gave us confidence to simplify and remove features without sacrificing the outcomes that we wanted. Listen to your team. Because the team believed in what we were doing and understood why the designers made the choice that they did, they could help us come up with solutions that we couldn't think of ourselves. So this final voting screen interaction was actually created by one of our visual designers and not me. And he pushed for it to get tested. And we wouldn't have put this in the initial release if one of our engineers hadn't made a passionate argument that we could find the time and it was worth it. So listen to your team, they'll help you make a better product. Okay, but let's go check this though. Were we, were we living in a fantasy world? Did I pull the wool over your eyes with my fancy designer speak? And you might have some questions like, won't players just honor the highest performing person in the game? And actually our testing showed that high performing players who were not sportsmanlike did not get honor. And this was an existential risk to our system. And we focused a lot of iteration and testing on this because if people were only gonna honor for performance, you wouldn't believe that the honor system actually related to sportsmanship. So how the heck do you test something like this before you ship a product? You can't just ask players because they don't know how they're gonna react. You can't just usability test a prototype because it's not representative of their emotional state. So we got creative. We assembled two full teams for our labs just like we normally would and they play games and see a prototype of the honor system. But we took one of our high skill play testers who's in the top 1% of players in North America. And in this screenshot, Right now, he has 50% of the total kills in the game, friendly or enemy. He has 80% of the kills on his team. And the pentakill means that he's just killed the entire enemy team. And in this case, he did it single-handedly. <laughs> and we told him to be a bit of a jerk to his team. So you, when you read this chat, it's passive aggressive and it's negative, but it's not, it's not actually that terrible. And we didn't, we didn't want to be too mean to our players, but it also made for a stronger test. Because if he was too obviously negative, nobody was gonna honor him. And this is what we saw. 
zero honors received. One of the testers had this to say. As soon as I saw what he said in chat, I knew I wasn't going to honor him. So even though he carried as hard as he possibly could, nobody wanted to honor him. By the way, we let everybody know what we were doing at the end of the experiment, and, and he had a nice little chat, and he like, gave some advice to people on how they could play better. <laughs> um, and it, it, it was positive feedback, <laughs> uh, unlike in the game. Uh, so we saw this post-release as well. Unsportsmanlike players are much less likely to get honor than neutral or positive players. So, great. So nobody's going to vote for somebody who's kind of a jerk. Uh, what if they don't vote at all? And this is the problem that we had with Honor 1.0. Well, we knew there'd be a honeymoon period, and we knew there'd be a drop-off after. And actually, engagement has leveled off at a healthy place. Our drop-off was two to three times smaller in the same time frame compared to Honor 1.0. What about when you lose? I know I get salty when I lose. It's not the best feeling, especially in a competitive game, like maybe some of my rank is on the line and my season and rewards. Uh, so yes, players honor less when they lose. And we made a category called stayed cool that was more likely to be chosen on a loss. And actually, stayed cool on release is equally as popular whether you win or lose. But we play with friends, you know, and we have a connection. Like, won't we just honor each other? Maybe we'll trade honors. Like, yes, and there are actually really good reasons why you want to honor your friends. You know, you have a social connection to them. You probably already enjoy playing with them, and you probably legitimately had a better game because of them. But players who frequently play with friends don't get more recognition or advance faster than solo players in our system. So we talked earlier about how we wanted players to feel and what their perception of sportsmanship was. How do we do there? Will players believe we made a difference? So we saw a 20% increase in the percentage of players who believed that we were effectively encouraging positive behavior. Even better than that, players believe that honor is discouraging negative behavior. And we even see early signs that they believe the community is more sportsmanlike overall. So these are things that in the past have been really hard for us to move. And we saw some great success here. But is this all perception? Or did something actually change in the game? When we look at our metrics, we actually see that chat is less negative. Of course, we're, we're not perfect, right? This was an experiment that we were putting out there, and we knew we'd learn some things. And so we had some pain points from players. And these are the kind of things that we're going to look to address in the next season of honor. OK, I went through a bunch of stuff. Uh, we talked about how we think about the problem space, what we did, how we did it, and what we learned. And you might be thinking, give me something I can take back with me. So my advice is, learn about common biases. Books like Freakonomics or Predictably Irrational by the keynote speaker from last year, actually, uh, are a great start, and they're very approachable. Or you could go hard mode. Our, our lead game systems designer has this poster printed out and posted behind their desk. It's a big diagram of all these different, um, different biases, and they're categorized. And it's great reference. Apply these biases to model behavior. Think about how real human beings are going to use and respond to your system. Don't just think about the rational econs that have perfect information, because that's not what's going to happen when you release your future. Incentivize carefully. We used incentives to build grit and resilience in our players while trying to minimize the impact on intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation isn't inherently bad, but we have to use it carefully. It's a very powerful tool, and it can be a double-edged sword. Teach your team why you're doing the things you're doing. Some of our best ideas came from 
all sorts of people on the team, and it only worked because they understood why we were doing what we were doing so they could help us make it better. Please, share your experiments and your results. This is a challenge that all of us face. We all know that gamers play all kinds of games, and we can't just succeed individually. So do more talks like this. I want to learn some things from you guys. Don't stop once you ship. Align your stakeholders around longer-term investment in this space. I think the player behavior team has been around for four or five years, if not now. It might be six now. Um, and there are people that have been on that team almost the whole time. There are no easy answers here. And you're not going to get it right the first time. You're going to have to learn things. We've learned so many things over the years, and we're not done yet. This is a space that requires continual investment. So our mission at Riot, being player focused, that's what led us towards sportsmanship. I hope I've given you some things that you can take back that might make your organization care about this as well. So thanks for your time, and thanks to the organizers for this opportunity to share what we've learned. Uh, and I want to thank my team and my fellow rioters. As an experienced designer, it's really awesome to work somewhere where everybody is focused on the player and they get why UX is important. All right, questions? Um, so I'm speaking as a player, but I was curious if your honor system has any impact on, um, I guess, like the odds that a team will win. So I know that as a player, like I played support, I'm very team focused. Yeah. I know that if I have a salty mid, that the ch I feel like the chances of me winning have just like gone down the drain. Even if they're a good player, it's like the morale of the team is going down. Yeah. I'm curious if you see like, if you have a loading screen, you see there are two honorable players on your team. Does that, does that primer that you're talking about, does that primer change the outcome of the game later? Does it have any influence on that? Uh, you know what? I, I actually don't, um, I don't have a, oh, any specific insight for that. We haven't looked uh, at that level yet, but that is actually a really great suggestion that I'm going to take back. Uh, we, we know from our previous research that having negativity in your game definitely affects your chances of winning. Uh, so the converse would probably be beneficial. Um, but we haven't looked specifically for how much effect that, that there's been and when we should. Awesome. Thank you so much. Great talk. Thanks. Hi. Um, so as a free-to-play game, um, one problem with punishing players is that they can always just go and create a new account. Yeah. Um, and so I know recently you've added a lot of loot, like the amount of st free stuff that you would normally have to pay for, you get for free from just playing now, which is an incentive to not get punished, because if players in the past would get punished, they just go on their alternate account and play for a few weeks until they could actually play on their main account again. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that has perhaps lost you some revenue in direct sales, while it's probably increased your player base due to a, a more positive experience in the game. Like, how do you strike that balance with giving away free stuff to mm. incentivize being positive. Yeah, uh, very carefully. <laughs> and and we, ha we have you know, a whole team of people that, that looks at the economy of the game and, um, and, and what we can give away and how we're selling things. Um, so that's not, not really my main area of focus. I don't have like, too much that I can share specifically. Uh, I will say that that team is, in the same way as the rest of us, very player focused. Like they're, whenever we um, make a new product or uh, give something away, we're always trying to find a way where it's a win-win for Riot and the players. We want our players to feel like uh, any purchases that they make were worth it and that Riot's being generous when we give them things. Um, and we talked with them a lot when we were making the system on what we could and could not give away and where we would get those, where we'd get those incentives from. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Over here. Hi. 
I'm curious, um, I mean, at the heart of all this was using honor to increase engagement and retention. Did it work? Uh, I don't actually think um, engagement or retention was going to be something that shifted a lot. Like, because there are so many things that affect, like, it could, it, balance changes affect engagement and retention. Um, so it's difficult for us to say, like, oh, we had this much effect uh, on it. Uh, th that'll be something that will hopefully become a little clearer over the long term. But philosophically, um, we believe that it must have an effect because we know the effect that negative behavior has on people. And if we are reducing that, then we should have a positive impact. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm not sure if League has uh, the same thing that Dota has, where they have low priority matches. So when you get in trouble for being bad, you get put basically in jail with all the other baddies. But yeah. have you considered um, potentially, like, if you guys have some sort of, like, honor rank, maybe having, like, a, a game mode where all the people of that rank get tied together or something like that? Uh, we've talked about it internally, certainly, and and players ask us the same question as well. Um, man, I wish uh, I wish Mike was here from Valve. I, I would love to hear some stuff on the results of their experiment. We uh, uh, we've we've been you know kind of hesitant to do something like that because we don't believe it would actually drive a lot of reform. Uh, part of the problem is. You're, you're taking players and you're putting them in an environment with other players and it kind of normalizes that behavior. There, there may be ways that like, you, you could do it so that um, you reduce those risks and, and maybe it would be a good way to kind of get those players out of the regular player population until they could reform. Uh, but yeah, we saw lots of challenges in there and, and for us, things like honor or um, reducing uh, negative behavior in Champion Select were higher opportunities. Thanks. Hello, I'm over here. Hi. Uh, Long-term player, I realized, you said five years and I realized, like, oh my God, I've been playing this forever. Yeah, <laughs> I, when I looked up the date for that, I was like, oh, oh boy, it's been a long time. Um, so you, so you think that the honor system has been overall positively received? I certainly feel so. I'm curious as to what some of your goals moving forward on and developing it are. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think how much I can say without um, <laughs> promising things that, that we're not sure we're going to do yet. I don't so, work so, for Valve, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so really the main focus for the team right now is hey, the end of the season is coming, uh, what are we gonna do for the next year? So th this was an experiment, right? Like we released, I think it was May or June, and we had about half a regular season. So what are we gonna do when we have a full year? And um, some of the things that we've talked about, like we've already done some changes to how we give you rewards and made them a, a little bit less variable. And they're still random, but it's like, hey, you know you're gonna get one capsule a month. Uh, we're looking at stuff like that. We're looking to address the pain points that I talked about earlier. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for, the, for your presentation. Uh, I'm actually curious about, uh, it seems like the honor system is uh, a solution to, to reinforce the in-game culture. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, as far as I can think about, it's actually two type of uh, players. Like one is uh, players who are gonna give the owner like a vote. And another type of players is players who actually receive the result. They can be the same players, but they play different roles yes. based on different perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So my question is, uh, how, what's your strategy or what's your plan to like players to understand this system? So like uh, players uh, whoever are uh, gonna vote, they understand based on what kind of, what kind of rules they're gonna vote or for receiver players, they understand, oh, why I got a reward, or especially for the example you showed, like a top-ranked player who got punishment, but uh, re just, in, just in order to reduce the frustration, right? Like, uh, what is a... Uh, 
Sorry, I'm so loud. But uh, <laughs> but so, what is uh, like uh, reinforced information to help those uh, like uh, players who got actually got the punishment to readjust their behavior in order to build a better culture? Yeah. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the last part of the question again? Okay, so all in all, my question is, uh, what is the strategy to like players to understand the rules? Mm -hmm. So basically, from receivers based on what kind of rules, let them to understand what the rules they can vote, what is good and bad. Ah. And for the bad players, for example, uh, to let them to understand, oh, I got a bad review and everything, how can I be better? So okay. what's the strategy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll, I'll talk about the positive first and then a little bit about the negatives. Uh, so on the positive side, I, we, you know, we did some publishing around this when we first released the feature. Uh, we actually, the first time you logged in after release, we had this modal dialogue that was like, hey, the new honor system's active, here's how you use it. But we're not actually very prescriptive about why you should honor somebody. We're just like, hey, if you enjoy playing with this person, maybe you should give them an honor. Uh, part of our strategy, though, was in the categories and what we named them. And that actually turned out to be something that took a lot of time and a, and a lot of iteration and a lot of alignment around stakeholders. Like, what could we name our categories so that it would prime people to recognize others for uh, behaviors that were related to sportsmanship? And so yeah, that, that was very central. And um, I don't even know if we're sure that we're happy with all the categories that we have right now. But we spent a lot of time thinking about that, and that, that's how we got towards like, hey, how do we uh, move people towards honoring for sportsmanship? Uh, okay, so negative side. Um, when people break community norms, how do we give them feedback? Um, how do we let them know that, you know, what they're doing, uh, maybe it's like okay for them, but it's ruining the game for other players. So when, when you get punished in League of Legends, we actually have a reform card that shows up the next time you log into the game. And it tells you, hey, this is why you were punished. And it gives you some context, like, hey, you know, you're like in the most unsportsmanlike 5% uh, or 0.1% of the community. And then we show you some examples of the games that you played. So we'll show you your chat logs, and it'll show you the things that you said to other people. And hopefully that gives you some context on how you're not in line with what the rest of the community feels. Okay. Yeah, that helps. Thanks. Hey. Hey. I was just wondering, is there anything unique about toxicity between friends that's different between, than between strangers? Oh. That's a good question. Uh, I don't have a good answer for that. I, I don't think we, we have looked really deeply into whether there's something very specifically different, mostly because you know, if your friends are being toxic to you, you probably just stop playing with them. <laughs> uh, which is you know, actually like, not always true. Like, Sometimes you play with people like, yeah, this guy's just really good and I'll just deal with like, his saltiness, right? Uh, so we, like, we think that's, that's a little more self-regulating, so we haven't looked super deeply into it. Yeah, we're, more, like, we're more concerned with the you know, like, random person that, that you're going to get matched up with because uh, we think the potential there for negative behavior is much higher because you, know, you don't know each other. Uh, you, you haven't played together before. You don't know how like, that other person plays, and so there's a lot more room for misunderstanding. Yeah, totally. Thanks. Hi there. Hi. Um, so, out of curiosity, do you think uh, your honor categories uh, encapsulates all of the sportsmanship behavior? And on a tangential part, are you willing to um, add or remove certain categories to keep your honor system fresh? Uh, okay, so first part, do I think that covers all the behaviors? No, no I don't. Um, but there, there's like a there's a practical limit to the the number of categories that we could have in the voting screen interaction that we chose. Uh, so we we tried to be um, pretty general purpose with them, 
And so for those of you who are familiar with the system, uh, like GG Heart is probably our, our like most general and catch-all. And then we had two other specific ones, uh, one of which was Stayed Cool, which I mentioned before, and the other one was, it's like, um, like Great Leader or something like that. Shot Caller, yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad it worked, you, you remember what it, what it is. Uh, so, so those, yeah, those, those two more specific ones were to like kind of capture like, like really impactful parts of sportsmanship, and then we had a, a very general one. Uh, as to whether we would consider changes in the future, uh, yes, we absolutely would. Um, we don't have any immediate plans to. Um, yeah, probably can't say too much more than that. All right, thank you. Thanks. Hey there. <clears throat> um, I have a question on how did you go about prioritizing um, what honors should be there on the screen and kind of deciding on uh, that total number of honors before it became too overwhelming? And mm. if you wanted to introduce a new honor, um, like how do you kind of go about adding in or taking on an honor? Is there like a system in place that you already have or is that something that you still need to study more? Yeah, we would probably need to study it more. Um, the number that we chose was very driven by like, what we thought players could uh, decide on very quickly because we knew that we're, we're asking for you know, our players to do this every game. So we want this to be fast and we want it to be something that you can make a really quick judgment on. So that was kind of the criteria that we used and we ended up settling on three based on, you know, like how people responded in testing and, and that sort of thing. Okay. Thanks. Uh, hi. hi. Um, you were saying how you wanted to avoid intrinsic motivation and having players behave a certain way to get a reward. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering if that's, if you consider that that might be creating like an artificially sportsman-like community. Because um, there's also other means for players to interact, like the Facebook page or group chats, and whether or not that has caused like players to be le uh, less toxic in those environments, or if it's just like in the game. Okay, so uh, is the question: um, do, do we see like additional effects outside? Yeah. Of, uh, I don't think we've really looked into that part specifically. It would be pretty hard to to tie back to the intervention that we did with the honor system. Uh, so why we're able to measure sentiment like this is because we have this, like, um, we have this recurring set of questionnaires that we give to players in the game, and we're constantly asking them the same battery of questions, and we're looking over time to see whether there are any changes in it. Uh, so we probably we don't have uh, likely the same type of tracking on, like, uh, on those sort of things outside the game, and it'd be pretty hard to tell what the effect was. Okay, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, so, um, now switching roles between uh, the attacker and the victim, would you say that before the honor sister, the system and after the honor system, do you see more players having incentive to play ever since uh, removing or just giving more of incentive to play nicely with people? So do you see more people coming back because, oh, there's less salty people on the game? <sighs> I think it's too early for us to tell that yet. Um, the system's been out, I think it's three or four, no, maybe five, five months, six months now. Uh, I think we see sentiment change, but I, I don't know if we see people coming back yet because of uh, you know, a better perception of the community. Like the, the, the overall um, change in how sports and like uh, our players think League of Legends is, or the community of League of Legends is, um, that changes very slowly. So I, I don't think it's like large enough yet that, that we actually are getting a lot of people um, coming back from that. Okay, fair enough, thanks. But we hope so. Hi, um, I have a question about player behavior outside of the actual game itself. So you said okay. there's improvement in the in-game chat. Yep. What about uh, behavior that occurs before the game, like uh, a Q dodgers or anyone who says mid lane or feed? That sort of thing that affects the mm. overall tone of the, the, the game that follows it. Have yeah. you seen any changes in that? Yeah. Uh, I don't think we've seen um, a huge change there. And, you know, like we, we track those metrics, but they're, they're, 
there are a lot of different factors that, that influence the, the pregame part. So it, it would be pretty hard for us to kind of tease out the exact effect of honor because I don't think it would be super strong there. Uh, and, and, and as far as I know, we haven't seen like, you know, any big movements in, in that area. And that is something that I, I think we would love to see improved, but it would require you know, a different, different type of feature. Excellent, thank you. And I think uh, that it, we have time for maybe one more question. Uh, also, hi. Okay. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but in uh, Honor 2.0, I don't believe you can um, honor like the enemy, right? Correct. Yeah. So I remember in Honor 1.0, you could honor the enemy team. So was there a reason for the removal of that option? Yeah, that's actually uh, that's a really great question. Um, yeah, that was very deliberate. We we chose to focus your attention on your team uh, to really build teamwork. We wanted first to you know, tell you like, hey, we think sportsmanship matters and we think sportsmanship within your team matters the most. That's why we're showing you only your teammates on the honor screen. So that was a very deliberate decision that we made. Uh, that's not to say that we don't think that recognizing um, people across team boundaries is, in, is not important. Uh, but we thought that for our first release, this was the most important thing we wanted to capture, which was interactions between teammates and how do we make that a little bit more positive. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you for the great questions.